Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm continuing my monthly series in which I recommend seasonal books for every month of the year. I've got a great pile of books to recommend to you for March reads. I've chosen quite a few sort of cosy comforting reads because I think with the terrible news that's going on right now too we can all use a bit of extra comfort from our books. I know that I certainly can anyway. So I've chosen a real mix. I hope you enjoy these recommendations and as always I'll link to the books in the description box. But the first book that I have to recommend to you isn't a particularly cosy read, but it's a real favourite of mine to read in March. And that's Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strachey. This is a very slight novella. You can read it really just in an evening. And it's set over the course of March 5th which is tomorrow. So if you have this book languishing on your shelves and you haven't read it yet, I really recommend getting it off the shelf tomorrow and giving it a read. This is a very funny story, although the humour is definitely quite dark, but I really enjoy it. It's set over the course of a wedding day and the young bride, Dolly, gets more and more anxious about her forthcoming marriage, especially when an ex-lover of hers turns up and tries to persuade her not to get married, but instead to run off with him. She's got a really ambivalent mother who's sort of oblivious to all of her worries as well. And in the end, Dolly retires upstairs to her bedroom with a bottle of gin, trying to decide what she's going to do. It's very, very funny, and the the title is definitely <laughs> satirical. As you know, if you live in the UK, you can get absolutely horrendous weather in March. You can also get lovely, very spring-like days, and of course, spring does start in March, so it's a real mix of weather. But I want to read you the description of the weather on March 5th in Cheerful Weather for the Wedding. Out in the drive there, standing about round the motor car in the furious March gale, everyone felt as though they were being beaten on the back of the head and on the nose with heavy carpets and having cold steel knives thrust up inside their nostrils. And when they opened their mouths to avoid the pain of this, big wads of iced cotton wool seemed to be forced against the insides of their throats immediately so that they choked and could not draw any breath in. <laughs> so not such cheerful weather <laughs> at all. But yeah, this is a real favourite March read of mine. So highly recommend seeking this out. And then another book that starts off on the 5th of March is this lovely book by Susan Branch. If you've been following me for a while, then you'll know I'm a huge fan of the American writer Susan Branch. I love her blog as well. I'll link to that so you can check it out if you don't know her work already. And this book of hers is called Martha's Vineyard, Isle of Dreams. And this is based on Susan Branch's own life and her own diaries that she wrote when she left California, her marriage was ending, and she left California um, really on a sort of impulsive decision to go to Martha's Vineyard, and she ended up buying a little cottage there. And this book essentially documents that, and it's so gorgeously illustrated. Her illustrations, as well as her words, are just fabulous. And you can see that the first entry is the 5th of March. I just love how her books are all laid out and this is a wonderful book to read to inspire you if you're going through a period of change. It's a book that's really about starting over and finding out what matters to you and who you really are and pursuing your dreams essentially too. So it's a very inspiring and very moving story and I think would also be a really great introduction to Susan Branch if you don't know her work but also if she's already a firm favourite of yours then this is the perfect 
best excuse to pick up this book for a reread and start it in March. So I definitely want to do that. And then I wanted to share this lovely book with you called Our Village. I have two editions of this book. There's this one. I don't know if you can see the cover. The light's a little bit tricky with this. Um, but then I also have this illustrated edition of the book, which is also really lovely. It's by Mary Russell Mitford, who was a contemporary of Jane Austen. And Our Village is her most famous work. It's a collection of sketches that Mary Russell Mitford wrote over the course of several, mag uh, several years for a woman's magazine. And they're really charming sketches about country life and the people that she knew who lived in her village. Mary Russell Mitford was quite a fascinating woman. She had an extraordinary life and really quite a difficult life, mainly because of her father who was a real gambler and he gambled away his own money. Then extraordinarily, on Mary Russell Mitford's 10th birthday, he bought her a lottery ticket, which must have been quite a disappointment to a girl of 10 years old. But when she cashed in this ticket, it, it won her £20,000, which was an absolute fortune in those days. And that enabled her to get an education that her father would never have been able to given her. Now, her father quickly gambled away all of that £20,000 that was left. And Mary Russell Mitford very much had to write to live, as well as for the enjoyment of it. But I really recommend reading Our Village if you haven't yet. And... I especially recommend picking it up this month because there are two little country sketches in this that are lovely to read in March. The first one is called The First Primrose and its entry is March 6th in the book and there's a lovely little description of fine March weather. Boisterous, blustering, much wind and squalls of rain, and yet the sky where the clouds are swept away, deliciously blue, with snatches of sunshine, bright and clear and healthful. And the roads, in spite of the slight, glittering showers, crisply dry. Altogether, the day is tempting, very tempting. I love that. And then there's another sketch that takes place in March, just after that one, and it's a sketch called Violeting, and it takes place on March 27th. So really fun to pick up this book this month. And then I love that description about the day being so tempting and you just want to get out and go for a walk and find the first primrose of the season, for instance. And I know that with spring coming on in March, I really want to get out into the countryside more and go on some walks. And so a book that I think will inspire me a lot this month and especially considering that March is the month for International Women's Day as well. I thought this would be a really appropriate read because it's all about women walkers in history and it's called Windswept by Annabel Abbs, Walking in the Footsteps of Remarkable Women. So this is actually just coming out in paperback this month too. It might actually have come out just yesterday or something in paperback too. So a good, a good book to pick up this month. Um, but it says, for centuries, the wilds have been male territory while women sat safely confined at home. But not all women did as they were told. Despite the dangers, history reveals many women for whom rural walking became inspiration, consolation and liberation. So in this book, um, Annabelle Abbs uncovers women who refused to conform, who recognised a biological, emotional and artistic need for wilderness, water and desert. And she looks at women like Georgia O'Keeffe in the New Mexican desert, for instance. She looks at Nan Shepherd, who explored the mountains of Scotland and Daphne du Maurier. 
um, and many other women as well. Women who loved to walk, and I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think it sounds fascinating and it will inspire me to get out and about this March as well. Then, of course, I have to uh, mention the Comfort Book Club choice for March, which is the un un unexpected inheritance of Inspector Chopra by Vasim Khan. And this book is set in Mumbai. As I'm recording, it's a very sort of grey, foggy, cold March day here. And this is a lovely bit of armchair travelling for me. It takes me to the much warmer climbs of Mumbai and this is a great read for anyone I think if you're a fan of a series like the number one detective agency series by Alexander McCall, Alexander McCall Smith I would recommend giving this one a go. It's about an inspector um, who has just retired but and at the moment of his retirement a new case came in that really fascinated him and even though he's retired he finds he cannot resist investigating this case on the side but his life is very much complicated by the gift of a baby elephant that he receives from his uncle on the day of his retirement and as Inspector Chopra and his wife live in a block of flats trying to keep a baby elephant is not very easy Anyway, this is such a fun, uh, light read and one that I'm looking forward to discussing with my mum as part of our comfort book club. We'll discuss the book on the last Friday in March. So if you want to read along with us, then do pick up this book for this month. And then, a two, well, there are two books that are really about lockdown and that were sort of first written when lockdown started in the spring or in the March of 2020. So they're quite poignant books to pick up this month and one of them is Skylarks with Rosie a Somerset Spring by Stephen Moss and this has some lovely nature writing in it um, when the world really went so much quieter Stephen Moss noticed how much more bird song he noticed um, in his ha by his house in Somerset so this is some lovely observations of the natural world during that year when so many of us really appreciated our daily walk and coming back to nature in some ways and this book is a celebration of that as well as being a poignant memoir written during lockdown and then this book has just been published this year and that's Tales of a Country Parish um, by Colin Heber Percy who is the vicar of Savernake Forest and I've just started reading this and it's a lovely book to dip in and out of um, Colin Herber Percy first started sending out newsletters to his parish and then word about these newsletters spread and many many people received them and he first started sending them out in March 2020 and they really documented what happened to him and to those within his parish during lockdown um, again, it's a very poignant read, but he also reflects on all kinds of different topics um, within his writing and it's really fascinating, but also quite a comforting book, I would say, and very reflective as well. So one that I've enjoyed just starting and I'm looking forward to reading more of it this month. And then what I thought would be a good companion read, in a way, to this is um, Jan Karen's books, her Mitford series. Um, Mitford is a fictional town, I think, set in um, North Carolina um, in the United States. And if you love Miss Reed, 
very much of the English English village type novel. I think you would really enjoy Jan Karen as well, um, the sort of American counterpart in some ways to Miss Reed. Um, but one of her central characters is a vicar, well a rector as they say in the States, and this book begins, I'll just find the quote, this is the first in the series, and the opening line is, he left the coffee scented warmth of the main street grill and stood for a moment under the green awning. The honest cold of an early mountain spring stung him sharply. So it starts out in early spring, I think March would be a good time to pick up this book and it goes on all through the year but you get descriptions of Easter for instance and then it goes on into summer and so on as well. But if you're in the mood for some comfort reading and escapism this month then I definitely would recommend um, travelling to Mitford <laughs> via this lovely book. And then I wanted to share, uh, well, another nature book, actually. Um, of course, there's the expression, mad as a March hare. And that comes from the sort of behaviour of hares during March, which is their courting season. So this is the month where you might see hares boxing, for instance, and generally behaving <laughs> a bit strangely. Um, but so I thought an appropriate read for this month would be this of the book, The Private Life of the Hare by John Lewis Stemple. He is one of my favourite nature writers and this is a part of a lovely series of his. It's a very slight book to read so I'd like to just pick it up this month and remind myself about the life of the hare. <laughs> I think that would be a super choice for me this month so one I'm looking forward to getting to and I still live in hope of seeing a hare. My mum saw one actually not that long ago which was really exciting but I wasn't with her at the time so I was really disappointed uh, so I'm still just keeping my eye out and hoping that I'll see a hare boxing or not <laughs> I don't care but I really would love to see a hare so maybe this month I'll be lucky. Who knows? <laughs> and then we're just starting to see the glimmer of yellow in the grass. The daffodils are coming up and later in this month they're going to be out in full glory. And of course I always think of William Wordsworth's poem about daffodils, those very famous lines. And I think so that I'll be putting this book of his poetry on my bedside table this month because I always love to read that daffodils poem this time of year but it would be nice to read some more poetry by Wordsworth as well. So I'm going to put this on my bedside table this month and then Dorothy Wordsworth was of course William Wordsworth's sister and her journals and her conversations with her brother inspired so much of his poetry. And I love reading her journals from their time at Grasmere, but I would also really like to read um, this biography of Dorothy Wordsworth. It's called The Ballad of Dorothy Wordsworth by Frances Wilson. I really would like to read a bit more about her life. I've read some, but not a really sort of comprehensive biography of Dorothy Wordsworth. So I'm hoping to be able to turn to this book this month. And it, again, it seems an appropriate choice as International Women's Day falls on this month too. And I've just always admired Dorothy Wordsworth and would like to know more about her. And then, this is a lovely anthology, a poem for every spring day, and it starts on the 1st of March and then goes on all through spring. So I've put away winter, a poem for every winter day, and this came out on the 1st of March, so this is on my bedside table now, and it just made me so happy to be able to pick up a spring anthology. I love the cover on this, it's so pretty. And then 
this book which I've raved about on my YouTube channel before. It starts in March so this is the perfect month to pick it up and again it's just a really sweet, comforting, lovely story. It's a children's book, it's called The Armourer's House by Rosemary Sutcliffe but it can very much be enjoyed by adults too and I think if you're a fan of Elizabeth Googe's writing you would really enjoy this. There are some passages that just really remind me a lot of Elizabeth Googe um, in this book. It's about a young girl who goes um, from Devon to London to live with her uncle and her cousins. It's set um, during Elizabethan times and all of the descriptions of their house in London right by the Thames are truly fascinating and Rosemary Sutcliffe is amazing at bringing history to life and giving you a real sense of what the sights and smells and tastes of Elizabethan London, what that would have been like. And I love the her characters, even though they live in a city, they're still very much in tune with nature and nature still plays a very important part in their lives. There's a lovely moment when one of the young girls is given a very precious bulb, which is a tulip bulb, and she's told that if she tends it very, very carefully, it will bloom in time for Christmas and it will bring her her heart's desire. And that does in fact happen but I'll leave you to read the book to find out what her heart's desire is and yeah I really recommend this one such a lovely read and perfect to pick up in March and then with spring the onset of spring I always of course think a bit of spring cleaning and when I think of spring cleaning I think of Mole in the Wind in the Willows who gets so fed up with it <laughs> and thinks drat spring cleaning, he, he wants to go outside and have an adventure instead and who doesn't want to have an adventure in the springtime really? With the sap rising it really stirs the blood. <laughs> so this is the perfect book to read when you're feeling in a bit of an adventurous mood and I love the adventures that Mole and Ratty and Toad have together in this book. It's always such a favourite classic of mine and one that I love to pick up in the springtime. And then this book by Antonia Forrest, The Ready-Made Family, also starts out in March. There's a lovely scene where the young heroine Nicola is sunbathing in the conservatory because it's this sun trap and she feels lovely and toasty and warm in there soaking up the sun even though outside of the conservatory it's freezing. Antonio Forrest wrote the Marlowe series of books for young adults. Um, they were written mainly in the sort of 1960s and she was such an amazing writer and I love her stories both those that are set in the school term and that are real boarding school stories and then also ones like this one that are set during the holidays, this is set during the Easter holidays and they're real sort of family stories. Um, this one is the seventh title in the series but if you're new to her books this one is still in print with Girls Gone By and you could definitely pick this up and read it and still really enjoy it even if you don't know the others in the series. It's a really fun read, very interesting family story. Um, in this book the Marlowe siblings have to come to terms with one of their elder sister's sudden marriages to a man quite a bit older than, him, than herself who already has his own children. And how the Marlows come to terms with this as a family and end up accepting their new brother-in-law and his children makes for a very moving and very memorable Marlowe story. So definitely one I recommend. And then one last pick that's really about celebrating the natural world and the spring season and that's In Pursuit of Spring by Edward Thomas. And it says... In March 1913, as the storm clouds of the Great War gathered, Edward Thomas set out from the suburbs of South London and travelled on his bicycle through Surrey, Hampshire and, Wilt and Wiltshire towards the Somerset coast. 
He was a 35-year-old literary critic and country writer at the time, a husband and father, a lover of poetry and places, who took to the road to meet the arrival of spring after what had been a long, melancholy winter. And this has some really beautiful, really lyrical descriptions of the countryside just blossoming into spring um, in it and is a lovely book to pick up this month. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my recommendations. Do let me know if any of these appeal to you or if you have any books that you think would be great March reads. I'd love to know, so do let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up over here on the screen. And I'll see you again next week. Take care, have a lovely weekend, goodbye.